Hi everyone, welcome to another video checking out a blast from the past, the 5th uh, edition Imperial Guard Codex. Um, now this 104 page document um, was published I believe in May of 2009 and that puts it about 6 years after the release of the 3rd edition Imperial Guard Codex. Now I had left the hobby at this point, I stopped collecting about 2001 um, and as I understand it there was 3rd edition Imperial Guard Codex and 5th edition Imperial Guard Codex which meant there was no guard codex in 4th edition. Now, as I said, I didn't play at this point um, or collect, so I don't know what happened in the 4th edition. I think there might have been a catagen supplement. Um, and if you're a, a bit of an old war dog um, in uh, collecting the Imperial Guard and playing Imperial Guard, then in the comments what happened in 4th edition because I, I can't find out what actually happened. So, yeah, but you can see um, it is a bit bigger. So this was 60 odd pages. This is 104 pages. So there's a bit more substance in this book um, compared to the third edition book. Right, so uh, a cool thing to always start with when I sort of look at these is the models, the miniatures. So you can see here um, our now almost discontinued Cadian miniatures. The plastics were, were in, their, in their prime. Um, and you can see that actually the Lemon Russ and the Chimeras are using old, old sculpts. So you can see the big fat demolisher turret style. And the Khmer is here actually, you can tell it's an old school one because look how narrow or small the actual um, turret is on the uh, Khmer. Um, I think the Sentinels at this point have been updated because in the third edition book I've got, they look quite dated, but they've definitely been updated. You can see the Primaris Psyker, that's old school. And then I've seen these these Commissar miniatures floating around, but they're now obviously discontinued as well. But it's a real Actually there's three, one, two, three, wow. Oh, cool, yeah, okay. Right, so... I'm not massive into lore, and I won't give it enough justice, but uh, reading through this is a bit more depth compared to the third edition book, of course, but one thing that stood out to me uh, is definitely this, this paragraph here. So, why collect an Imperial Guard army? The soldiers of the Imperial Guard are but normal men facing a galaxy of superhuman warriors and lethal alien predators. They rely upon superior numbers, discipline, training, and above all else, honest human courage. Of all the armies in the 41st millennium, is the brave souls of the Imperial Guard with which it is most easy to identify with. Now, this definitely resonates with how I feel about playing Guard, and I always will play Guard. I'm an ex-army dude from the Australian Army many years ago, and I like to, you know, pretend in a childish way that in 38,000 years' time I could be a lonely guardsman with a bayonet and, um, you know, a las gun and a frag grenade fighting off something hideous would be dying quite quickly, but you get what I mean. Um, now, reading through this, there's some, there's some definitely some cool stuff to call out. Um, the first one is the constant reference to Lord Solus Macarius. Uh, Lord Solus Macarius. Of course, he has his own Forge Ward tank, uh, that big boy. Um, but it's interesting to see this pop up because I don't think in the third edition book they actually mentioned him much. Um, also, within, um, I think, a couple of pages here, I'm pretty sure at this point, and if I'm wrong, tell me, yeah, um, they introduced the concept that the Imperial Guard is the elite forces of the planetary defense uh, forces for each planet. So every planet must run its own, raise its own military to defend itself from invasion. And of that military it raises, it must then send off some of its best troops to form Imperial Guard regiments for service to the Greater Imperium. And it's somewhere in here that actually talks about where if those troops which are sent out to be in the Imperial Guard are not up to standard, the governor of the planet will be punished uh, for that. Um, so that's really cool. And I think it's at this point where they sort of talk about that compared to the old book. And I could be getting the old book wrong, but it's cool to see this sort of come to life and called out. Um, yeah, I think also it has a bit more depth, like the Scholar Padrinium. I'm going to just mispronounce that, but like, you know, the, the, the orphan sons and daughters of Imperial officials who go on to become part of the Commissariat, the Inquisition, um, Ecclesiarchy, or the um, Administratum, and likewise also become shock troops. Um, so this is cool how it's called out here. Okay, this is mentioned, that's a Bane Blade, and I don't know if it's actually in this book, we'll have a look at the, back, at the end though. Okay, so Lord Solomon Macarius, that's cool, he's called out. Um, now, having read, I'm pretty sure this edition is quite unique that every single regiment gets a, its own bit of comprehensive law. So, Mordian Iron Guard, the Talaran Desert Raiders, Vestroyan Firstborn, Arm Against Steel Legion, the Hull and Ice Warriors. The Artillian Rough Riders were mentioned in the previous book. I think so were these guys, and I know both of these were as well. Now, 
I don't know what happened, of course, in the 4th edition, maybe um, in White Dwarf magazines. Each regiment got a bit of love. But this this really feels like the glory days of Guard, because a lot of good lore. And as we'll look at the back of the units, there's a lot of specific units, or characters mainly, for these individual regiments. It's so cool to see. Uh, a bit of history, uh, a timeline. I believe it's over the course of uh, maybe 500 years of, of recent history in the 40th millennium. Um, and I did notice throughout this that every single regiment or name regiment is mentioned. Uh, so the Mordians, the Catagens, etc., uh, etc. Et so it's quite cool to see uh, the Stroyans, that every regiment is mentioned uh, throughout the, the recent history of the 40th millennium. Okay, you know, getting onto the rules. Uh, and this definitely feels like a lot more compared to what it was in the third edition book. So, orders. Uh, they, they, they've they always been part of Guard, as I understand it. But what's unique about this edition um, is actually there's a bit more structure to how orders are given. So firstly, there's an order of the orders that can be given. So a senior officer, which is a company commander, has to give orders first. And once all the company command squads have issued their orders, officers in platoon uh, command squads can attempt to issue their orders. So interesting to see there's actually a differentiation between company and platoon orders. Then uh, there was a bit more to actually uh, making orders work. So the unit which receives an order, as I understand it, has to basically pass a leadership test. Now, if they roll a one, double one, that allows something to, to happen, a benefit. And then um, if, if they do fail the test, they can't receive an order, which is fascinating. But then also if, if they're all a double six, basically uh, means that no orders can be issued at all um, in that phase, in the shooting phase when orders were given uh, back in this edition. So there's a lot more depth to orders at this point, which is interesting because uh, obviously it's more steps actually making things even work in the first place. Now, as we look at um, a company command squad, so led by company commander and a veteran, uh, some veterans, and you can see he's got his own specific orders he can give. So bring it down, which looks very familiar. We've all seen that. Um, that only worked in this edition against vehicles or enemy uh, units. And um, they basically get the benefit of all weapons being twin linked. Now, twin linked is popping back up in 10th edition. We can reroll wounds. And I don't know what it actually means in this edition, but interesting to see the word twin linked is used from 2009 and popping back up all these years ago. Now, fire on my target, um, that is a, a, that's a bit of a different one. So enemy unit is at all. The order unit immediately shoots at another target. So it's really, okay, it does something about cover saves and rerolls. Uh, get back in the fight is same to what it is now. Basically, you, you fall back and you can fight or recharge. Now, regimental advisors. Um, now, not all spots. Okay. So I believe, tell me if I'm wrong, any of you old war dogs, but these guys can be attached to a command squad. But what I find most interesting here is this rule here for the uh, master of, of um, the fleet. Intercept reserves. So basically it jeopardizes or it interferes with your opponent's ability to bring stuff on reserve. So again, uh, it's funny when I look through this in the third edition book, a lot of stuff that's seeing now in the rules is not new. It's just a, a recycling of it, just like a lot of fashionable items. But this obviously now is, I think, a 1CP or 2CP strategy. But interesting to see it actually comes from the fifth edition book uh, or codex. Okay, commissars. Um, uh, there's a bit more depth to it here, but fundamentally... Um, you had the Commissar, Lord Commissar, so th this is an evolution on the previous book, and as you know, we had Lord Commissars in the 8th edition codex, and now gone, it's just Commissars, um, but there was some, some benefit for having that, so obviously the summary execution rule, um, and stubborn, whatever the stubborn, stubborn rule means, so that benefits the unit it's attached to. Um, so it's interesting, again, 10th edition, you can, you know, across, across the entire game, add characters to units and this was something that could be done in fifth edition i think even also third edition um Psyche, okay he's popped up tech priest engines here minister and priest um now okay you said company command squad our platoon command squad and you can see the order is given by a junior officer the platoon commander a front rank fire second rank fire incoming uh, which basically is the cover save and this basically is, as per the previewed uh, 10th edition rules for Gar, that's, an, that's basically a rule we've got now. And of course, also in the 9th edition book, 
And move, move, move. Um, then infantry squads, interesting they call that so conscripts, basically capturing the same thing. And what I don't know, looking at this, is um, how many models are in each. There's more rules at the back, we'll check in a sec. But you can see conscripts. And at this point, weapon skill blitz go the other way around. So the lower the number, the worse. As to per now, where the higher the number, the worse, which, I mean, whatever. Um, also to call out um, the movements of all infantry models, I think in this edition was the same. I think it's always six inches. That's why it's not mentioned here. Right. Now, heavy weapon squads, um, the Chimera armored transport. You can see armor value still existed. And I'm no expert, but uh, there was a, a very elaborate, or, or a more difficult, difficult, different way to sort of navigate actually wounding vehicles, but different armor values for each side. And you can see here uh, firing ports, points, and basically says that up to five can be uh, fired. So, and also access points. So in this edition, it looks like a transport could only be accessed by the back door, um, which is very different to what we've got now, where you can just go in from anywhere. Um, also, amphibious, which means um, it can cross water features, as though it's clear terrain. So there was obviously rules for water back in this edition. Wow. And then mobile command vehicle, that, that's maintained itself all the way through into um, 9th edition and 10th edition, actually, where you can issue orders uh, out of a Chimera. Uh, veterans, uh, they are in 3rd edition as well. Now, Penal Legion Troopers, this is, this is cool. Um, I didn't see this in the previous one. No, they're Scouts and Stubborn. I don't know what these rules are, but there must be something good. In the beginning of every game, roll a D6, and you can add, add, um, add in some additional rules for these Penal Legion Troopers, these criminals trying to prove themselves on the battlefield. Right, Ogrims, um, they're there. Again, no Bolgrims. There must be a, more of a recent thing. Rattlings, they've got the rules of Infiltrate and Stealth. Um, and I think we're seeing the Stealth rule pop up again in um, 10th edition. Rough Riders, um, they're, they're nowhere near as good as what they are now. Like now their damage output is just redonkulous. Um, but yeah, I mean, okay, they mentioned Sentinels. Again, interesting, there's no mention of Armored Sentinels, it's just Sentinels, and that was consistent with third edition. Um, again, you can see Armor Values, and they've got the Scout Rule and the Move Through Cover Rule, whatever that is. Oh, Scout Sentinel only, okay. Ah, uh, correction, okay, so now you've got Scout Sentinel and Armored Sentinel, because in the third edition book, there was only Scout Sentinels. But now you've got both, and you can see the front-facing Armor Value is, is tougher, 12 versus 10. This is really interesting. I hope you're enjoying it like I am. Right, Stormtroopers. So they, they're the modern day, well, actually, I'm going to say this, but Scions. Um, they were in the previous book as well, the third edition book. But you can see they've got some more Gucci sort of rules. Reconnaissance, airborne assault, and behind enemy lines. And at this point, they've actually got a very familiar looking hotshot las gun profile. So 18 inch range, just like the 8th edition book. Strength 3, AP 3. I don't know how that compares with rapid fire. Now, Psyker Battle Squad is, I think it's like the Wyvern Psychers that are now gone in the uh, 9th edition book. But an 8th edition book could have like a choir of them and they could benefit from having more models. But I think that's where it comes from, the, the Psyker Battle Squad. And now we get into the um, the serious end of the, the units is the Lemon Rust Battle Tank. Now, you can see, interestingly, they actually call out, although they're all the same, almost, the differing values across the uh, individual types. Now, what you're basically seeing here is the Demolisher, Punisher, and Executioner has got a stronger rear armor value. Just like the third edition book, I think this was driven by the kit you could buy. So as per, the, the until recently, you could buy a battle, uh, Luminous Battle Tank, and it had these variants here, and then you could buy a separate box with these variants here. But as you probably know, Luminous Kit now has all of them. But the point is, is that there were actually a bit of a difference um, in the two types. So the more heavier ones been a bit better armoured, likewise the lesser armoured one there. Now this was a time of um, Ordnance 1 and Large Blast templates. Um, and interestingly you can see Strength 8, which matches the 9th edition book, 72 inch range, but as, as we sort of look through it, yeah, the Twin Linked Auto Cannon has got the Twin Linked rule. Um, strength 7, Strength 8, Vanquisher, Okay, so here they kind of talked a little bit how the Vanquisher is a bit more punchy. Of course, the rules in 9th edition are just mental, ignoring invol saves, long way that last. Um, Eradicator, cover saves can't be taken. Okay, that's still here. Demolisher Cannon, Strength 10, 
AP2, which looks to be quite a powerful profile. The Punisher, Heavy 20, still got that. This is funny, isn't it? The Executioner is heavy, two, heavy 3 and Blast. So yeah, it's just funny. It's like even all these years later, it still feels very familiar, doesn't it? You know, of course, there's some, some new ones this year, but still very familiar. Right, Hellhound, Flame Tank. In the third edition book, it was just the Hellhound. Now you've got the Devil Dog and the Bane Wolf. Um, so of course, the Devil Dog is... Heavy one, Melter and Blast, and oh god, this is hilarious. When you just look at it, so Melter is now a keyword in Tenth Edition, which basically means if you're under half range, you get a benefit. Okay, oh, everything just comes back around, doesn't it? So, right, so template, template for the Chem Cannon and the Inferno Cannon, but awesome to see uh, this here. Um, Hydroflak Tank, okay, and it's got benefit for shooting at Skimmers. Skimmers cannot claim the cover saved gained due to moving fast out against shots fired by the Hydra. Similarly, Bites cannot claim... Oh, wow. It's just, it's, it's just cool to see other nuances in the rules and how it all changed. Now, this is exciting. This is, this is so cool. Because the, these are, you know, these are Forge World models. Now, the Colossus Bombard is still available. The Medusa is now gone. And the Griffin left quite a while ago. But... Just the fact these are mentioned in the codex is, is super cool. Like, I really, this is great. This obviously was a great period to play Gar. Um, Manticore, not the third edition book, and the Death Strike Missile. So, they kind of, you know, this this plays to the rule that which was sort of the hour is nigh rule in um, the eighth edition book. I don't know what it's at now in the ninth edition codex. Um, but you can basically see here that there were basically impacts when you could actually, you know, Fire, fire the weapon and some benefits there right next is you had the Valkyrie I don't think this was in a third edition book and then what's super cool now for me is that Lord Castle and Creed and Color Sergeant Kel are mentioned so again they went in the third edition book and as you look at some of these rules here if you move back to the, to the eighth edition book and obviously Creed and Kel are now gone unfortunately but listen up maggots and sword protector were rules still used in the eighth edition codex um, and in here um, it does give you a fair bit more depth. And actually, as I remember back, I think the third edition book, he actually was included, but it's still cool to see these rules being carried through. Knight Commander Pask, he's definitely new at this point, and he had some additional rules, uh, which made him a bit more of a better um, shooter or commander. Now, this is cool, Sergeant Bastoon. Um, he has now got his own relic power sword, I think. I think, I think. Bastoon sword, I believe it is. But again, you can see he had a specific um, um, uh, rules. And I don't know if it is a model. I'm not sure. Um, Strachan is back. Now, Sly Mark Guardsman Marbo. And I wonder when they change him, change him to Sly Marbo. But again, you can see that he has you know, the same loadout. So he can't receive orders, just like in the current book. He can do all his infiltration stuff, rip a pistol, and a venom blade. So all the rules he still has today. Um... Harker, he's new at this point, and he's still around today, and you can see he actually has some additional other He doesn't look like he's a big, heavy character. Yarrick, um, he's still going strong at this point, hasn't been discontinued yet. Uh, God rest his soul, or the Emperor rest his soul. Now, this is what I was talking about before with the regiment. So you've got Captain um, Al Raham for the Talaran uh, regiment, so a specific character for Talaran. That is cool, and he has his own specific orders. And interestingly, Claws of the Desert Tigers is now still a relic. Um, or it was. No, it is. It is still a relic, isn't it? Uh, Commander Chenkov. Um, again, uh, a specific character for the Vestroyan regiments with his own specific regim um, orders. And you can see here, send the next wave. Uh, send the next wave. It was a stratagem in the Eighth Edition book. It looks like it's going to be a stratagem in the 10th edition book. So, you know, I, I keep saying it, like, nothing is new. Everything is just recycled. Like, like the wind, swift as the wind. Funny that. Uh, for the Talaran. Now, then you had Mogul Kamir. Wow, okay. So, a, a character for the Attilan Rough Riders. This is, wow, okay. And you can see it's got some more cool rules. Cyber Steed uh, charges it. Just receives D3 wins instead of a 1. Okay. Not Dead Dog. Um, I think he's a new addition at this point. 
And yeah, that, that's all the units. Um, now, one thing about these books is, um, okay, GW talking about simplifying the rules, and I, I think I respect that because to go from go this, then you got to look at the weapons, but then it's like it says eviscerator as opposed to putting the weapon you've got to go back to page 35 just put all the weapons here like, or put all the weapons in the data pages whatever you call these things but i know you know things change but simplify i like I, you know hopefully 10th edition the codexes are easier to read because it's a big anyway we'll look at this i'm not going to go through this in too much detail but fundamentally everything feels so familiar um once i say that plasma plasma weapons don't have two profiles at this point they've just got um one rule well, they do have the get hot rule, whatever that is. Um, now, I do do know, compared to the third edition book, there's a lot less equipment you can take, like all the, the, the war gear, because the third edition book, you could take all types. You could have like four or five different pieces of kit on a character, but now it looks a bit more restricted. I don't actually know what you can equip them with, because if I do flick back, and apologies, I'm all over the place, but... I think it does call out at some point. I think it's later in the book, actually, what each model can take. But now you've got all the different um, bits of war gear. Um, oh, but I, I'm sorry, but it's just like this. Why not not just put the put the rule here? See page 56. You've got to go back. Anyway, I'm going all over the place. Not a great video, is it? Okay, now it talks about actually, you know, building yourself an army. Um, okay, I'm not going to read all this, but this seems... Like a lot of depth. All right, as I pay, turn on to this page here, now I have the model showcase. And I know they do this in the the, the, the recent codex, but they do, seem to do it a lot better here. So, and why I say that is that there's actually a bit of like effort in here. And I know this because this isn't a specific model. They've gone and taken a heavy weapon squad, kneeling chap, and put a grenadier there. It's, it's only small stuff, but this is cool to see. Likewise, this guy, that's not a specific model. That's obviously the heavy weapon squad uh, legs with a, a guy chuck on a grenade. And likewise here, they've got the sergeant with a bolt pistol. That's taken from the old command squad kit. And likewise this here. So there's a there's actually some very basic kit bashing going on in here, as opposed to the current codex, which is basically showing stuff out of the box perfectly done. Um, now, I don't, I don't, again, I don't know if this was something that came in the kit. Likewise, all that. But this just feels like it's got a bit more love in it, a bit more sort of hobby passion in inverted commas. Um, okay, so there, there's the there's the basilisk which is still in use today, and there's that chap, and he, um, his head pops up actually. Um, you can yeah, and the Lehman Rust here actually you know again cross pollinating kicks. It's just so nice to see this sort of this effort. Um, that's cool. That model I've seen him around a little bit, but cool to see you actually have a wounded guardsman to put on the tabletop. Um, right, and then the catechins now. I don't know the catechins too well, but again. A lot of love here, so I think that's not in the box. Neither is that guy. Um, I don't know about this, but again, a lot of love. Like, just someone's actually done very basic kit bashing uh, for the codex. These look, that's that's old school, but I don't think... Look at that guy. Oh, God. One-handed grenade launcher. Good luck holding that still. Um, but yeah, some really specific models for the, the catechins. And of course, we still have them, but you don't have this level of detail anymore. Um... More catechins looking super cool again. That's not out of the box, nor is he. Nor is he. Um, you know, great to see that. Guardsman with shotgun. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Now, this, yeah, okay. So, okay, it's only one line, but you've got the Mordians with their, their miniatures, the Talaran, and they're looking very dated. Oh, that guy looks dated. That must be, oh, there he is. Captain Al Rahim. Um, uh, the Armageddon. Of course, I've had a recent made to order and charge you, what, like 80 pounds for a box of 10 miniatures. Oh, well, Holland. Um, yeah, well, they don't actually have a model for that character. But, I mean, you could use this guy. He looks suitably, suitably luxurious for the Vestroians. Right, and then getting, uh, yeah, Chimera with the old school turret, looking quite narrow. The Valkyrie and the Lehman Russes are actually still the old ones. And again, some lovely detail on the crew. And I know this kit still exists, but I love cabin detail. Although I don't own one of these yet. Right, more miniatures. Tech presenter still. I've actually got that miniature still. Uh, it's actually not too bad. And then, yeah, okay. Yeah, there's all the commissars. Those two, there was three. No, that's a different one. Yeah, there's like heaps of different commissar options. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's a 
<laughs> this is a great book. Really nice to see, like, all the depth in there. And again, it is nice to see all, this, all these specific rules still sticking around, all these additions like that. Okay, almost there. We're rambling. Um, so actually, an Imperial Guard army list. Okay, so you go from having the units explained with law and specific rules, checking their weapons, and then now you move on to this, and this is where you get your points, and then you get like a listing of stuff they have. Oh, and I know from my previous video, some of you said that this there was a really good functioning system, but it's all over the place, but whatever, it's still cool. Now, I think what I want to call out when I look through here is actually how familiar some of the point costs are. So that feels about, is that about right for the current command school cut? About 50 points, but all the bits and pieces you can take. Um, okay. Creed's now gone. Okay, bad example. Strachan, he's about 80 points now, I think. Okay, and yep, you can see all the gear he has. Special rules, not dead dog, special rules, a lot of special rules at this point. Feel no pain, funny that, it's, it's come back again full circle. Fear is charged, bulky, stubborn, Lord to the end of heroic sacrifice. Okay, Lord Commissar, Yarrick, um, Primaris Psyker, Minister and Priest, who's got independent character, that's popped up again, oh, so funny. And Righteous Fury, and there's all his war gear there, and they can they can all do specific things, of course. Um, elite, so Ogren Squad, Rattlings, Stormtrooper Squad. Okay. Sly Marbo, again with the specific kit, no different to what we've got today, but then a host of spe spe special rules. So, again, going back to what they're doing in 10th edition, you know, they had specific rules that may be like, I'm assuming Lona. And he's behind. He would be used for similar style miniatures and other armies. Um, so basically, they had like universal rules where different models would have different pieces, as opposed to where they had a ninth edition where they, they individually explained every single thing, which actually makes it more fluffy but harder to navigate if you're trying to understand the entire game set. Um, right, troops, uh, infantry, infantry platoon. So okay, infantry platoon was built of command squad, two to five infantry squads, two to five heavy weapon squads. Did I have special weapon squads and a conscript squad? Okay, so I saw in the previous book, um, this was given a fair bit of focus and it still remains here. Uh, interestingly, Commander Chev costs 50 points and Al Raham for the Talaran is 70 points. Okay, stalk them in Desert Rider. Okay, infantry squad. Um, yeah, nothing here looks too out of, out of sync what we currently have today. Of course, today you've now got Death Corps of Kree Catagen and um, Cadian Shock Troops. But at this point, as per the recent other editions, they just have an infantry squad. Um, veteran squad, Harker, troops, transport. Yep. Okay, but you can see here, it's almost like they've basically, you know, got all the individual elements, actually build the, the data sheet in this part of the codex. Um, and yeah, it's, it's here. 150 points, 165 points, 190 points. Interesting, at this point, that she rated Executioner as the most effective model or option, or leaving Rust tanks. Okay. And then, yeah, a quick, easy guide for... Ah, oh, this, this is weird. You've got you know, rules everywhere, but okay. You want to work out quickly, you go here, you check your things off, you can look at your weapon skill, your core stats, your armor values for your vehicles, and then your weapon profiles. Okay, this, this is where it's good. Um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that 30 odd minutes over a long route of, of my rambling. Thoroughly enjoying this fifth edition codex. Uh, again, it's so nice to see so many parts still uh, visible today in the year 2023, 17, when was this? You know, how many years is this later? Um, it's just, this is really nostalgic actually. And as I said, I wasn't in the hobby at this point, but it's, it, again, it's so cool to see all these rules and, and things mentioned, relics, special abilities, popping up still in the 9th edition codex and also going to be in the 10th edition. But yep, hopefully that was enjoyable and easy to follow to a degree. Um, and if you enjoyed it and want to support me, you can do so with a like, comment, or by subscribing, uh, joining my Patreon platoon, or simply watching any of my other YouTube videos. A massive thanks to my current supporters. Let's get your bayonet sharp. Let's go oiled. Faith in the Emperor Strong. Patreon platoon, sound off. Tank Commander Glenn, Tank Commander Watchdog Van Etten, Tank Commander Mitchell, Colour Sergeant DuPont, Sergeants Adal, 
the Colonel Merrill, veteran Gibson, Hall, Lundeen, Guardsman Beard, Coquelin, Flint, Hills, Malik, Nitin, Nguyen, Smith, Tom, Tompkin, Conscripts England, Gilliam, Goodwin.